Drupalgeddon. In 2014, hackers took advantage of a bug that sent the internet into chaos. A patch fixed it, but not before millions of sites were exposed. Four years later, it happened again. A new bug, a new exploit. It gave attackers the ability to run system commands directly on the server. Just one request, and everything broke wide open. The target, once again, was Drupal. A content management system powering governments, universities, media outlets, and enterprise networks around the world. This time, the flaw wasn't in the database layer. It was buried deeper in Drupal's request handling process. When data came in, form inputs, URLs, user requests, Drupal was supposed to sanitize it, validate it, and pass it safely between components. But something broke. CVE 2018-7600. And it scored a 9.8 out of 10 on the CVSS scale. At the core of this exploit was something called a render array, which is the system Drupal uses to build and display pages. These arrays decide what to show, how to show it, and what functions should run behind the scenes. One of the functions was called post render. It was only supposed to run safe internal code after a form or page finished rendering. But here's the problem. Drupal didn't lock it down. An attacker could send a specially crafted request and slip their own values into the array. That meant they could hijack post render and tell Drupal to run dangerous PHP functions like exec or pass through, so functions that literally execute system commands. Drupal is built in PHP, that's the scripting language powering the backends. Logins, comments, searches, the whole lot. Drupal treated attacker input like it was safe code and executed it. That mistake opened the door to remote code execution. This meant they could do everything from creating admin accounts and dumping user databases to dropping back doors and installing malware. They could hide their tracks, deface sites, or use the compromised server as a launchpad to reach deeper systems. Once the proof of concept was out, it didn't take long for attackers to move. Just like the original Drupal Geddon, script kiddies blasted it through public scanners. Then came the criminal groups. There were signs that more advanced actors were watching. Malware authors hard-coded the Drupal Geddon 2 exploit into botnets. So infected machines could automatically scan the web, find vulnerable sites, and fire off the payload all without a human lifting a finger. So how did this one work? They'd scan the internet, looking for vulnerable Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 sites, still running the unpatched versions. Just automated fingerprinting, so checking URLs, HTTP headers, page structure, anything that gave away it was Drupal. Then the request. One crafted HTTP payload, targeting Drupal's internal render system. This is when post-render came in. That internal function meant to safely run code after a page was finished rendering, where attackers injected their own code, those dangerous PHP functions. And just like that, the server executed the command. Next, the web shell. Something to make sure they didn't lose access if the server rebooted. Some attackers planted crypto miners, others went after data, extracting users' information, and in a lot of cases, they wired the site into botnets, turning it into a zombie, used to attack other systems or act as a command and control hub, targeting government portals, universities, media sites. It wasn't a zero day, but it moved like one. There's no official number, but the fallout from Drupal Geddon 2 likely cost tens, if not hundreds of millions globally. Thousands of sites compromised, business downtime, emergency incident response, full server rebuilds, in some cases, data breaches, which means fines, lawsuits, lost trust, the stuff that doesn't just hurt now but keeps bleeding over time. And because so many of the victims never went public, the real cost is probably a lot higher. But security forums lit up. Red teamers were testing proof of concepts within hours. Blue teamers scrambled to patch live servers before the scanners rolled in. Tech blogs picked it up fast. But for regular users, most had no idea anything had happened. Meanwhile, attackers were already planting shells and building botnets. The vulnerability was discovered and reported through Drupal's security process. The Drupal security team played a major role in analysing, verifying and coordinating the fix. Just like the original Drupal Geddon, the patch dropped the same day the vulnerability was disclosed. Because Drupal's security team knew the clock was ticking, 
They dropped the advisory, the CVE and the patch all on March the 28th, 2018. The patch did two big things. It added strict validation, so only safe, pre-approved functions could run from that array. It hardened input handling, filtering and escaping values so no one could sneak in PHP code or smuggle commands. In short, they stopped letting users control behaviour and closed the door the bug had opened. Again, it taught the security world that trusting user input is still dangerous. It doesn't matter if it's a form field, a database query or a render array deep in the framework. If you don't validate it properly, someone will find a way in. Response time still matters. The Drupal team did everything right. Same day patch, clear advisory, but that only works if people see it. A lot of admins didn't or couldn't respond fast enough. And the most frustrating of all, this had already happened. Drupal Geddon was supposed to prevent this, but four years later, same platform, same mistake, just a different part of the system. But once again, user input was trusted where it shouldn't have been. You'd think that lesson would have stuck, but this proved something deeper. Even big platforms with mature dev teams can repeat old mistakes, just in new ways. That's why security isn't just about finding new threats, it's about remembering the old ones. Even now in 2025, Attackers still include Drupal Geddon 2 in their automated scanning tools, because somewhere out there, a Drupal 7 site is still online. Drupal Geddon 2, a single request straight to system level access, all because one internal property trusted the wrong input. And just like last time, thousands of sites paid the price. Let's just hope this is the last of Drupal Geddon, because we've had two major hits, but a third, let's be honest, trilogies rarely end well other than Back to the Future. And that was CVE 2018 7600. One for the archives. And if you enjoyed this, we've got new CVE breakdowns every Sunday. Subscribe so you don't miss out. And give this a like to help the channel out. I'll see you in the next one.